Amen. So that leads me to a second question today. I'm going to get personal today, all right? Amen. I'm going to get personal. Has your mind... Oh, i got to get personal with me too. And my mind... <laughs> been influenced by the, more by the world or by the Word? What holds sway in my mind? The world's values or the Word's values? I've got to ask that question. And, and what is our role as participants in this war? And here's what I think. I think that the church is allowing too much influence from the outside and precious little influence from the Word of God and we're losing the spiritual, invisible, cultural war. Can I say that this message has to become more to you and me than just a commentary on what the young folks think? Am I right? You know, there's those kind of preachers that preach that way. Oh, my, isn't it bad? The young folks are bad. And everybody goes, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not one of those preachers. I want to preach to me. I want to talk to you today. Hello. <laughs> this isn't about them. This is about us, is it not? It's about us. And so let me ask you today, do you stand for truth and righteousness? How about this question? Are you conforming to the world or are you being transformed by the Word? I wonder if we have allowed our minds to be open in some areas where our minds should be not open. Is your mind open or is it not open? I wonder today if the influence of thousands of TV shows, hundreds of movies, Dozens of popular songs, hours of listening to talk radio and watching the political jargon on the news have not influenced our mind and the way that we think. Uh, and if you think that that doesn't happen, my friend, you need an education. Because every single form of media, every single thing that you read, every advertisement also carries with it uh, the expressions and the values and the principles and the morals of the person who's producing it. Come on. One time I was invited to watch a movie at some friend's house, and I went over there, and, and, uh, and in the, at the, towards the end of that movie, all of a sudden there was something on the screen there, and, and uh, you know, they were just saying an absolute bald-faced lie, and there was two or three young people there in that, in, in that room, and I mean, I just couldn't sit there, okay. I'd like to tell you I was a nice, comfortable guest, but I wasn't. I just interrupted the movie, and I stood up, and I said, that television set is lying to you right now. The guest looked at me like, oh my. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. Hello. Let me ask you this. How firm are you in holding to the absolute moral truths of the Bible? <laughs> are you politically correct? What about social issues? Oh my. What about abortion, adultery, the gay issues, getting drunk, getting high, cursing, talking, and taking God's name in vain? How firm are you in holding to the moral truths of the Bible? Now let's go a little bit deeper. How many think we ought to? Come on, wave at me. Come on. How many of you want a pastor to tickle your ears or you want a pastor to teach you the Word of God? Come on. <laughs> when it comes to your family, your kids, your neighbors, are you willing to tell them the truth? <laughs> are you willing to say what you are doing is not right according to the Word of God? Or do you stay incredibly silent about the issues of our day? Or maybe you say, I've just changed the wording a little bit from saying that's a sin in the eyes of God to saying something like this. Well, you know, maybe that isn't the best decision. How many of you know that that's not the way to handle that? Well, you say, Pastor Bob, I don't want to drive people away. I, I try to soften things a little bit. I try not to be so strong and so tough on certain areas. Let me just go a little bit deeper yet. Come on, somebody. Is there, are there areas of the Word where you have personally compromised? Instead of being 
standing for the word of God, you've remained silent. Instead of marching in the street and saying this is wrong with our in our culture, instead of being salt and light, we've hidden our light underneath the bushel. And here's what I believe, church. I believe in our efforts to be open, in our efforts to be nice, in our effort to be tolerant, to be relevant, to be non-judgmental and accepted, we have lost the war that we should be fighting. Come on, somebody. And let me tell you what's happening now. Our culture is now demanding that we as Christians accept their view of morality and family and love and spirituality and their interpretation of God's Word. You say, Pastor, do you want to be, in, you want to be labeled as intolerant and judgmental and old-fashioned and hard-headed if that's what it takes to preach this gospel of Jesus Christ then go ahead and call me that because let me tell you something I'm going to stand before the king of kings one day and give an account for what I preach and I stand for the truths the moral absolutes of God's word come on somebody wow this was a tough week for me I told my group, I got a group. Did y'all know that? I go to Celebrate Recovery. Hello. And I told my group, y'all pray for me. I'm struggling this week. You know why? Because I tried to do preach everything but this. But I'm preaching this. Come on. So I got the third question today. Here's the most powerful question yet. Are you living as Lot, who was open, or Noah, who was not open. And with all that in mind that we've talked about, I want to paint a picture for you of two families who lived in a world that was very much like the one that you and I live in. Both biblical families are people who were godly, even righteous. And, and both had the unfortunate experience of living in a very real wicked world. The ancient world was not as different from the world we live in today, except there was no iPhones and modern stuff like that. But these, these families are found in the Old Testament book of Genesis, and I want to contrast their lives today. I want to contrast Noah's life and Lot's life, okay? First of all, I want to say that Lot was open. Lot was a man who, I would say, is particularly for the purpose of this message, was an open type of a fellow. And I personally believe that the story of Lot in the, in, is one of the saddest stories found in the Bible. You know, he was Abraham's nephew, and, and Lot had heard about the God of heaven. He followed the God of heaven. There is no doubt that in his association with Abraham that, that, that he heard and saw many of the blessings of God and even experienced that. And the scripture even calls Lot righteous, okay? God credited him with righteousness. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 8 says, For that righteous man, it talks about Lot like that, okay? Calls him righteous. And it says, that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. We're going to get to that in just a moment. But let's just see how this story unfolds for a moment. Abraham and, Lot's, and Lot left Haran together. And, and a few years later, they, they, they wound up with so many sheep with so much blessing of God that they had to separate from one another, all right? And so they had this conversation, and Abraham gave Lot the choice. He said, where are you going to go? And they stood up, I guess, on a hill and, and looked out. And uh, Genesis 13 tells us what happened. It says, and Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as you go towards Zoar. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan. You see, Lot was an open-minded person. And Lot saw all that nice green grass down there. And Lot said, man, if I take my sheep down there, they're going to be fat sheep. They're going to grow quick, and I'm going to make a lot of money. It's going to be good for business. It's going to be good for me. It's going to be good for my family. But I want you to notice, uh, as time progresses, he chose the plain. But if you read it, a couple verses later, Genesis 13, 12, and, thir and 13, it says, Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain. 
rain. And I want you to notice what it says in the next little phrase. It says, and he pitched his tent as far as Sodom. He pitched his tent towards Sodom. He was outside the city of Sodom, but he was close to that city. And the Bible describes Sodom for us. It says, but the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. Sure, Sodom was an evil city, but man, when you got an open mind, hey, you know, that's where business was good. That was a trading place. A lot of people went in and out of there. And so let's just continue this digression a little further. Okay, Genesis 19 and verse 1, just a few chapters later. Okay, first he chose the plain, then he got his tent over there by Sodom. Now look what it says in Genesis 19 and verse 1. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. Huh. He was sitting in the gate. Now if you, if you know a little bit about biblical history, you know that if you sit in the gate, that means that you have become one of them. All right? You have joined up with them, and you've actually become one of the elders, one of the leaders of that community. And you say, well, wait, and, 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 and you know, in all fairness, for open-mindedness, you know, this was good for business, you know? You have to be open. Well, I want to tell you that Lot's openness had a powerful and huge negative effect upon his wife, his children, and his family. It would have been far better for Lot had he moved his family as far away from Sodom to the very edge of that valley where, where there was just a few little sprigs of green grass. It would have been better for him. I don't know if you know what happens in Genesis 19 if you've ever read it, but let me tell you something. This is not a PG chapter, okay? This is an R-rated chapter, all right? And I'm going to tell you something. I'm grateful for that because the Bible doesn't soft sell what happens. The Bible tells the truth about stuff. Come on. And, and, and so what had happened was that these two angels had come to see the wickedness of the city and to warn Lot and his family to flee. So, you know, to make a long story short, Lot winds up taking them into his house to protect them because he knew how evil the city was. And then in the night, the men of the city who were homosexuals came to Lot's house and they sent uh, and, they, and they said, look, send out those two men that came into your house so that we might, and I'm going to use the old King James Version, know them carnally. If you don't know what that means, you, you need to look that up, okay? Uh, and so, so a lot says to these, me, to these men, he says, look, don't do this thing. And the amazing thing is that Lot's response has baffled hundreds and hundreds of biblical readers as they've studied the Word of God. It's just almost like, seriously, that's what you said? That's the best that you could come up with? You had no more morality than that? What's wrong with you, Lot? I mean, seriously, when my wife reads this story, the spirit of slap comes upon her. Y'all don't know what that is. That's all right. 